I want to talk about automation when I'm mixing music. To me, music, it's not a static thing. So mixes shouldn't be a static thing. It's not just put the faders up in a certain position that is the quote unquote right position. Mixing is dynamic. It needs to flow with the song. It needs to follow what's happening. So I use automation to do that. And today I want to walk through how I do some of that. Before we dive in, I just want to let you know, there are a bunch of affiliate links below. If you want to help me out, help support the channel, please take a look at some of those. There's a Dolby Atmos template that I have available down there as well. Click on the links. All of that stuff helps me out, helps out the partners I'm partnered with as well, but really helps me out. So take a look at those, but let's let's get into this. Probably the biggest influence on me in terms of how I approach automation, especially over the last, I don't know, 10 years almost, has been Chris Lord Algae. So I want to look at his approach to start with, and then I'm going to get into some of the differences between the way automation works for him and the way automation works for me since I'm working in Pro Tools and he is on an SSL console. And then I'm going to show you guys how do I sort of apply kind of the principles of what he does to work with the automation system that I have in Pro Tools that lets me go quickly and efficiently and do anything I need to do. So first of all, let's talk about Chris's approach to automation. Chris basically has all of his faders sort of armed and writing automation right from the start of the song. And he just kind of works through the song in one pass, as he calls it, meaning he starts at the top of the song and then he works all the way to get to the end of the song. If he misses something, he'll roll back a little bit and then he'll punch it in. There are a couple benefits to this approach, I think. The first is you can just sort of hit everything in one shot. So you stay within the context of the song and with everything that's going on with every move you make, which is really great. The other thing is it keeps things dynamic. It's not, I'm going to take chorus one and paste it on chorus two. Each of those sections of the song will have their own kind of thing happening as a result of it, which I think keeps songs interesting and keeps them flowing into the next part of the song. So I think that's a, a big deal in this. So let's talk about how the automation works for Chris with his SSL. For those of us who are working in a DAW, it is definitely a little different because the SSL is based on time code. There is incoming time code into the console. That is how the console knows where it is in the song. For us in a DAW, we don't need to worry about that because all of our audio is in the DAW. We just have this big, long session. The SSL console, it doesn't know how long the song is. So it just writes based on incoming time code. When Chris starts working on a mix, he uses absolute mode on his console. And what that means is basically where his faders are on the console, that's what's going to get written at all times. So the way the SSL works is he starts playing back when he's in absolute mode, he can make adjustments, and then if he stops and rolls back a little bit, he can either punch in individual faders or he can just join the entire console. So something you'll see him do a lot of times when he's working on a song is he might roll into, say, the first chorus and he will make a bunch of changes and then he will roll back to the top of it and punch in all of those changes. Because anytime he punches back in, when the SSL starts writing its automation again, it will write based on the absolute positions of those faders. 
if he rolls back a little bit and just punches in a couple of faders instead of the entire console, when the SSL gets to new incoming time code, time code it hasn't seen before, it will re-engage the entire console into that absolute fader right mode right at that point in time. So it just makes it easy for him to work really quickly. Now, Pro Tools doesn't have an absolute mode, but I'm going to show you how I kind of work around that and create my own absolute fader mode. Now, before I get into talking about how Pro Tools automation actually works for me, I want to go over a couple of quick setup things. Number one, I work off of an S1, which is a control surface, so that I have actual faders. There are also some features on the S1 that I use that I want to show you. First thing I want to talk about, the S1, I use these soft keys on the S1, which are all at the bottom of the surface. The first four are set to layouts. Layouts are basically a way for me to assign specific channels to particular faders. When I mix, I use a lot of VCAs and I have the same VCAs in pretty much every session. They all land in exactly the same spot in these layouts every time so that I can have muscle memory and just work quickly. And you can kind of see what those are there. Then I have these other soft keys. These I use more when I'm working on automation. Back and play is a cool feature in Pro Tools. When I press that, it will roll back a certain amount and then immediately start playing again. I usually have this set for one or two bars when I'm working on music, and you will hear it getting used a lot when I demonstrate how I'm actually automating because if I miss something, I want to ride something a little better, I'll just hit back and play. It'll roll back a little bit, and then I'll get what I missed and just keep on going. Punch preview and preview, I'm going to talk about a little more as we get into the Pro Tools automation side of things. So let's look at Pro Tools automation as I use it. There are two primary automation modes that I work in. There's auto latch and auto touch. I cycle through these different automation modes using the record button on the S1. It will just cycle through all the different modes. So let's look at these modes to begin with. So the first mode I'm going to look at is auto touch. Now, the way auto touch and auto latch work is nothing writes unless you touch a fader. So if I just play, it's not going to write automation. The way auto touch works, though, is if it's playing back, I touch a fader, start moving it, you can see it immediately goes into writing automation. Now, if I let go of the fader, it returns back to whatever the value previously was. It does an auto match to go back to that position. So this is great for me when I'm refining things, when I already have a bunch of automation written and I want to just fix something. Auto touch is my friend. Auto latch works very similar in that nothing happens until you touch the fader. But the difference is when I move the fader and let go, it continues to write. Auto latch is important to me because if I want to work in a way that is similar to the absolute mode on SSL console that Chris uses, this is how I get it. I have everything in latch. Now, when I stopped, you can see right here where I stopped, it dropped a red line. This is because I have this auto join feature on. The way auto join works is when I start playing again, when it gets to that point where it stopped writing, it will automatically join in and continue writing at that previous value. This is very similar to how the SSL works for Chris when he is in absolute mode. He gets to new time code coming into his console and it just joins again. So watch what happens when I play. I start playing. When it hits that point, it goes back into write at that previous value and continues 
to write. And then when I stop again, it's back in that auto join, has that auto join point. Now, the problem is if I move my cursor in front of that position for whatever reason and start playing, that join is lost. And I found it is real easy to kind of mess this up. So that's why I have a different way of doing this. So this is where I start getting into some of the features and macros that I've programmed in SoundFlow, and I have an automation SoundFlow deck that I use. I've actually got it up here on the screen where you can see. This is where I start getting around that, and it's by using this right on stop latch. And what this does is when I stop, it will write to the end. So if I hit that, you can see over here in the automation window that it has armed that. So now if I start playing back, I move my fader. When I stop it, it just writes that value to the end. This is important to me because it gives me more of that kind of absolute way of working. It gets around the auto join on here not always working properly. All right, let's talk about preview mode. Preview mode basically lets me take things kind of offline so that I can preview what changes are going to be. And this is, again, another way for me to kind of work in that absolute mode, but I can actually hear what I'm doing while I'm doing this. So if I play back now and I move my fader, you can see it moving, but it's not writing any automation. It's just getting that position. Now, if I stop, no matter where I am on here, that fader stays in that new position that I put it in. So let's say I want that new position and I want it to start right here. There's a couple of different ways I can do that. One, I could hit this right and turn preview off. This is a macro that will right to the end and then it will turn preview off for me. I created this macro because I found myself a lot of times working in preview and then I would want to do a right to end and I would forget to turn preview off and I would start riding faders and none of that would get recorded. So I just created a macro because I, I, it's, it's a user error. It's, it just helps me get around this. So if I hit right preview off, you can see it just drops that new value right there and keeps going. So if I put preview on again, and now I'm going to move it to a different position. The other way I can get this value is I can use punch preview, where I can just punch it during playback. I could punch it while I'm stopped, too. And sometimes I'll do that. Like if I hit punch preview right now, you can see it drops that auto join line again. Now I can hit back and play and I'll hear the previous automation that's there and then it will punch in to where I want it. But let's say I want to put this in another position and I just want to punch it in manually. So I can play and then I have that button to punch preview here on my S1. I just hit that and it punches in at the new value. And if I hit right on stop, have that latched, it just writes it to the end. So this lets me kind of work from the top of the song all the way to the end. As I make changes, it just writes everything to the end. So I always keep moving forward. Very similar to the way Chris works. There is one other feature I want to talk about, and that is this capture. What capture does is capture will grab all of the currently writing automation values. So I'll use a few different faders for this. So let's say we roll into a section. I've got a bunch of different faders going, like maybe these three, you can kind of see. If I hit capture and stop, that captures that value and then it stops playback. This is another macro that I created to do this. So now what I can do is I can play through and punch those values. I could either do it right where I'm stopped, and that's why I have this 
punch capture and write to end. If I hit this right now, it's going to punch the values of the automation when I hit capture and stop, which is going to be right around probably this last break point. So if I hit this punch capture right to end, just drops it in. I can hit back and play a little bit so that I can hear what happens. And then it drops into those new faders. So let's get some other values here. And then I will hit capture and stop. The other thing I can do is I can punch that. And if I hold down the shift button on my S1, that punch button I have, for me, it changes to punch capture. So I'll play back, punch capture, and it drops those values in right there. If I hit stop, it's gonna write them all to the end. So just helps me keep working and moving quickly. One other function in Pro Tools Automation I use a bunch is trim mode. Trim mode lets me trim existing automation. The other nice thing about it is it takes the faders and puts them right at Unity. So let's start right around here. For me to get into trim mode, I hold down the shift key on my S1 and I hit my automation modes button, puts everything in trim mode. So right away you can see all of these faders snap to Unity. So as I mentioned, trim mode lets me add new automation on top of existing automation. It's really good for refining existing automation. It's great when I get client revision notes back and they want the bass up a couple of dB, maybe the background vocals down a couple of dB, things like that. I can just trim it in those spots with the fader like this, write the new value, and then when I take it out of trim mode, it will reincorporate or coalesce, as they call it, those new values on top of the existing automation. So for example, if I play a little bit here and I add a bunch of new automation and I stop, now you can see this yellow line, that's the trim line. The blue line is basically that's what the kind of actual absolute automation is that's happening. Because you can see the black line, that's the automation I'd previously written. Yellow is the new trimmed automation. And then blue is the culmination of both of those. If I take it out of trim mode, I have it set so that it will just reincorporate that right into the automation line. So out of trim mode, there you go. So those are the automation kind of modes in Pro Tools, most of them anyways that I use. Uh, one other thing I should mention is I mostly do volume automation. Every once in a while, I will do mute automation. Sometimes I will do plug-in automation depending on what I'm doing. But I try and only enable the automation modes for things that I'm actually writing just to keep things simple. It also reduces the load on the CPU in my system because that's something that nobody talks about. When you start putting automation in here, it starts eating up CPU power. So if you're pushing the limits with plugins and processing and reverbs like I do, when you start trying to do a lot of automation on top of that, it taxes the resources more. So just something to keep in mind in DAW world. So that's the automation modes and pro tools that I kind of use the most when I'm doing music. Do you use automation though when you're mixing? Leave a comment below. Let me know. Do you use faders? Do you do breakpoints? What works for you? I would love to hear about it. But until the next time, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.